Hey you guys, I'm gonna talk uh, about chapter, I'm gonna read from chapter two in uh, The Experience of Nothingness. Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj just talks on realizing the infinite. I've read from this a couple of times already. <clears throat> So, uh, chapter 2, at the highest level, nothing is. At the worldly level, everything is. Visitor, forgive me for going back to what Maharaj said yesterday because I forgot. I asked him about the presence of the guru, and he said there is something saying, guru, guru, guru. Maharaj, oh yes, guru means that I amness itself, which always reminds you, I am, I am, I am. That is the guru, 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 like the sound of a motor car starting. It is a continuous reminder that you are. For this trifling talk, why are you using this equipment? Referring to the tape recorder. Visitor, because the trifling talk takes us back all the time to that which is not trifling. Maharaj, just so. Visitor, can I ask a question? Maharaj, of course. Visitor, this morning Maharaj said, this mystery of the knower and the known should be followed up. The known is not really known by a knower. The known is known because its perceptions, thoughts, feelings, are movements in consciousness, and they are known because of their appearance in the light of consciousness. Is that correct? Maharaj, it is just like that. Ayani is the most stupid. He is not concerned with knowing in the conventional sense. When this waking state, this consciousness appears, then only everything appears. Prior to that, where is the question of knowledge, ignorance, or yana? Visitor, but deep sleep, is that really a state? Maharaj, yes. The integral combination of waking state, deep sleep, and the dream state comprises I am. Visitor, but in deep sleep, there is no time. Maharaj, time is there. Only the witnessing of time is not there. Visitor, how can there be time if there is no witnessing? Maharaj, your watch did the witnessing job and told you that you were asleep for eight hours. Visitor, so witnessing comes afterwards. Maharaj, agreed. Visitor, in the deep sleep itself, there is no time. Maharaj, the one that tells you later, what is he like before telling you? Visitor, formless. Maharaj, when it is formless, when the form is not available, the consciousness I am is not there either. Visitor, so in deep sleep, there is no I am? Maharaj, no, but the witnessing of deep sleep does happen. The principle that witnesses the deep sleep does not sleep. And I want to explain that to you guys because believe it or not, I've read Maharaj say this. I can't even begin to tell you how many times. And just tonight, I just understood what he was saying. See what I mean? So, um... When it, is, when it is formless, when the form is not available, the consciousness I am is not there either. And once again, for Maharaj, the consciousness I am is the personhood. The personhood is not there either. So this is in the deep sleep state. The personhood is not there either. So here's the visitor. So in deep sleep, there is no I am? No. But the witnessing of deep sleep does happen. The principle that witnesses the deep sleep does not sleep. And who is the principle? The principle is the primary where every wherever the, the primary where everything flows from. That is the pure awareness. That is the principle. Pure awareness does not sleep. So the pure awareness, which we all are, is always there. Okay? 
But the person in deep sleep, the personhood is not there. The principle that witnesses the deep sleep does not sleep. Visitor, I don't understand that something can be timeless and yet exist, the deep sleep. Maharaj, you go into a very deep samadhi. Then you will realize that if you want to meet a state of nothingness, you yourself must also go into a state of nothingness. Visitor, is that what I call omnipresence or presence? Maharaj, I amness is presence. That I amness present should not be there. The non I amness only can meet that nothingness. Very important what he just said. I amness is presence. I amness is the personhood. That's presence. That I amness present should not be there in the nothingness. That personhood should not be there. The non I amness only can meet that nothingness. See? So the, the person that we think we are, the body mind, um, the, the individual person that's personal can never meet the nothingness. This is why the whole purpose of this path is to peel away the personhood the personhood can never meet the nothingness ever because there, there's, there's too, too many concepts, too many attachments, um, too many um, desires. The personhood could never meet the nothingness. This is why it has to be peeled away. The non I amness only can meet that nothingness. Visitor, still there is, I have no word for it, presence. There is no thought, no feeling, but there is, Maharaj, no thought, no feeling. Visitor, I used to go into samadhis, which were just like deep sleep. In three hours or so, I noticed that many things had happened in my immediate environment. But my guru was very unhappy with that. He said, you must not do that. Maharaj, Samadhi and the experiencer of Samadhi. Did you get acquainted with both aspects? Samadhi and the one who enjoyed Samadhi? Visitor, now, so many years later, I say they are identical. Maharaj, okay, the experiencer and the experience are one, are one and the same. Visitor, but it cannot be remembered. Maharaj, it is not to be memorized. It cannot be grasped by memory. The manifest dynamic, fluid Brahman cannot be caught in any words. Visitor, can you say that everything, even ignorance and pain, is a pointer to the ultimate? Maharaj, when you are completely depersonified, you are no more an individual than whatever is, is an embellishment or decoration or a puja to the parabrahman. But so long as you are wrapped up egotistically through some words, no puja can happen. I, I want to read that again because I actually heard something that I, I, I would like to make a clarification on. So Maharaj says, when you are completely depersonified, you are no more an individual than whatever is, is an embellishment or a decoration or a puja to the parabrahman. And I want you to understand something. What, what I heard actually was that, it was regarding Ramakrishna, that uh, Ramakrishna was not, uh, was not a realized being. He was not in God consciousness. I emphatically disagree with that statement. Um, and the person went on to say that uh, Ramakrishna had a love affair with Kali and he went through that whole, um, Sadhguru told the story about how he had to cut Kali to, to, to get rid of the, the constant um, hallucination of having her come to him 
so that he could be uh, a Paramahamsa, which he did. Uh, but the person telling the story said that uh, Ramakrishna did not want to be uh, a Paramahamsa. He wanted to be a worshiper of Kali and have this love affair with Kali. So then he was not realized. And I emphatically disagree with that. And here's Maharaj explaining why. I want you all to understand that Maharaj also did bhajans four times a day until the day he died. Um, he explains it as consciousness, worshiping consciousness. I emphatically disagree that Ramakrishna was not in God consciousness. It is merely consciousness worshiping consciousness. There is one. There is no more individual at all. And this is, um, I believe, what the, what the difficulty is with the person that was telling the story because they have no understanding of the oneness. They're speaking as an individual. And um, it, it was a shame that, that Ramakrishna's name was, was getting uh, trampled on like that. But he absolutely was in God consciousness. Absolutely. So I'm going to read this again. When you are completely depersonified, he could have never been a Paramahamsa if, if he had any personhood left in him. Okay? So when you are completely depersonified, you are no more an individual than whatever is is an embellishment or a decoration or a puja to the parabrahman. See, it's consciousness, worshiping consciousness. But so long as you are wrapped up egotistically through some words, no puja can happen. As long as you have any shred of the personhood still there, There is no, there is no uh, complete oneness. So, um, you know, here, here's what everyone really needs to understand. You have to use your own common sense when, when you hear these things out here on the internet. I mean, we have the gospel. We have the gospel of Ramakrishna. So for someone to say that he was not God realized is uh, it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. But uh, no, he was absolutely in God consciousness. And, um, you know, when you get into that oneness, the whole universe, you are one with the whole universe. There is no more individual. And it appears that the person telling that story uh, d does not understand that. And it it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that Ramakrishna's name got trampled on like that. Visitor, knowledge with a capital K. The ultimate knowledge, Maharaj, the absolute visitor. Yes, knowingness. I don't know how to call it, Maharaj, but that is no knowingness in the absolute. Knowledge is for the ignorant. There is no knowledge in the absolute. There is no knowingness. Knowingness is only in the past. Visitor. Here we face the difficulty of words. Maharaj, you better not call it knowledge. Visitor, pure consciousness. Maharaj, in that state, there is no knowingness. Visitor, but no unconsciousness either. It is not possible. Maharaj, it is unconscious. Visitor, from the point of view of the mind. Maharaj, yes, because you are. The indication is given with reference to consciousness. That is why you call it no consciousness. Visitor, yes, but in reality, from its own point of view, Maharaj, you are talking of the absolute. There is no I amness. There is no personhood. It's hard for us to really wrap our head around this when we still believe we're this form, this body, mind, and I mean, e even if we sit for hours and some of us can go right into Samadhi and feel that great expansion and just be in that nothingness. Um, 
You know, I still I, when I was when I was talking the other day about giving you that exercise on how you can really see that you are not your thoughts and you are not your emotions. I remembered back how difficult that was for me to, to understand that I was not my thoughts. And I struggled with that when I heard Muji say, observe your thoughts. I sat here arguing with myself, okay, we have to observe our thoughts. And I who am I talking to, right? Okay, we ha I have to observe my, my thoughts. How do I do that? How do I do? Of course, I see my thoughts, not even knowing. Of course, I'm seeing. I'm seeing my thoughts. They're separate from me. I'm seeing them. And all I kept saying, of course, I could see my thoughts, but how do I observe them? You, do you see? It's all sleep. It's all sleep. It's so funny. Visitor, yes, but in reality, from its own point of view, Maharaj, you are talking of the absolute. There is no I amness. Visitor, I don't know how to call it. Maharaj, call it absolute. The moment you say knowledge, the quality comes in. Always keep these little phrases that I share with you because they're going to help guide you in the right direction. So one of the phrases that I caught on very early from this Sargadatta was knowledge is for the ignorant. And who are the ignorant? Does, does that mean knowledge is for stupid people? No, nope. ignorant means sleepers, people who have not awoken yet, people who are still in Maya, okay? We're the seekers, we're seeking knowledge. So knowledge is for the ignorant. Keep hold of that saying. Keep hold of it, it will guide you. Visitor, I don't mean that, Maharaj. You are talking of the Nirguna state. Visitor, I don't know the Sanskrit term. Maharaj, guna means I amness, and Nirguna means no I amness. Visitor, I am disappears in the absolute. Maharaj, yes, a non knowing state. Visitor, a non knowing state that knows. Laughter. Maharaj, knowingness appears on the non-knowing state. Visitor, yes, the relative beingness is known, is recorded in the absolute. Maharaj, beingness comes on the background of the absolute. So, so let's let's really understand that with all these terms they're using. So we have the absolute, which is the source, which is everywhere. The source never sleeps right it the source is the one that's witnessing everything when we are in deep sleep because there is no i amness in deep sleep there is no personhood we go right back into the pure awareness when we're in deep sleep it's amazing isn't it so um everything that happens it 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 <coughs> it stems from the the pure awareness everything happens in consciousness nothing happens outside of consciousness the, uh, the awareness the source you see but I, I see it as how I make sense out of it is I see the the, the three branches that Muji talked about in the um, example with the personhood the observer the personhood the self and even above the self we have the pure awareness that observes the self Okay. And we are in that space when we are in deep sleep. So Maharaj, being beingness comes on the background of the absolute. So visitor. So it is known in the absolute. Beingness is known as an object. Maharaj, if knowingness is not known, who would call it knowingness? Visitor, there is nobody to call it anything. <laughs> Maharaj, that is the reply. <laughs> That's the right answer. There is nobody to call anything anything. This is all in Maya. This is all the sleep. That, that we're somebody to call anything anything. <laughs> Maharaj says that is the reply. Visitor, so have I understood it right this morning? Maharaj advises us to find out who is the witness in deep sleep. 
Maharaj, all these worldly statements are just to please somebody. Actually, there is no substance in all of this. Visitor, so no advice? Maharaj, the manifest dynamic nature, don't stamp it with words, just be. Don't conceptualize. See, anytime, anytime we think we understand something, remember, it, it's still an object. It's still not, anything we learn, we are not that. Anything we say we understand, we are not that. It is still something out there separate from us. It is another concept. It is another, it is another thing that we thought up. It's, a, it's, it's just another concept. Anytime we use words, words are concepts. So anytime we use words, it's just another concept. So this is what he's saying. The manifest dynamic nature, don't stamp it with words. You cannot describe it. There are no words. Just be. Don't conceptualize. Now, everybody is weighed down by words. Suppose a child is there and the child is dead. <clears throat> Whatever that principle, that dynamic principle has left the body. No, you cannot say what that dy dynamic principle is. It has no name now. Because of this association with the body, you have tried to capture it with words. Visitor, so words are the only problem. Maharaj, yes. The whole problem is with the words. Since that principle which has quit the body is now freed from the body, you cannot capture it through words. The dynamic being this principle, because of its association with the body, embracing a certain form and certain words and concepts, is suffering. Without that, without form and without words, how can it suffer? Think about that. How can it suffer? It's not, it's not like, you, you know what the picture I just got, honestly, it was like somebody holding somebody's head underwater and it's struggling to breathe. The, we're trying to hold the, the, this vast universe, this universal consciousness, we're trying to hold it down into this body and um, identify it with words. And this is what the suffering is. <laughs> we, we, like, we're limiting our, we're, 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 we're expansive as the universe and we're limiting ourselves to this little form here. This is what the suffering is. How can it suffer? Visitor, all this stops immediately when you see it as a puja to the ultimate. Maharaj, that means all this worldly business stops. You may understand it that way. Once you understand that you are not the body, nor that you are wrapped up in name and form, and that you are this manifest Brahman, only you are free. You are none of these things. Then you are free. And here's the key. Here's the key. You will never see anybody else as, as that form either. You will understand, like that story I, I spoke about with uh, Ramakrishna, you, you, when, when you ever see stories like that, um, you, you will, under, or when, whenever you're speaking about stories like that, <coughs> you will understand what, what Ramakrishna was doing. There, there will be no misinterpretation of anything like that because there is no more form in your own experience and understanding. There is no more form and there is no more psychological mind or, or name or or religion or concepts or attachments of any kind your whole interpretation about life about everything that you see is totally different and that stands out like a flashing red light Visitor, even the idea I am not free is part of the puja. Maharaj, what do you mean by puja? Puja is a process or an aid to propitiate somebody. Visitor, well, okay, would you call it 
unintelligible. Maharaj, call it whatever you like. It is an expression of it. Visitor, it, it is consciousness playing with its own. Maharaj, yes. To a newly arrived visitor, if you are going to sit here, you must ask questions. If you are not going to ask questions, take the rearmost seat. Visitor, if you come here, you must stick out your neck. Otherwise, it is no use being here. Maharaj, if you enter the arena, you must fight with the questions. Sec second visitor, of course, of course. Maharaj, pointing to a third visitor. For years, he has been trying to assimilate knowledge, but he has not got an iota of knowledge. What knowledge did you get? Visitor, the ignorant man has not got any knowledge, and the sage has not got knowledge. Then what is the difference? Maharaj, the ignorant one has to acquire knowledge because knowledge is valid for the ignorant. For the Yani, there is no sense of knowledge because he dismisses knowledge as unreal. Why is that? Why does the, the Yani dismiss knowledge as unreal? Because every single thing we learn from any book, from any college, from any university, they're all taught by people in a sleep. It is all taught by Maya and everything we learn are concepts to keep us bound to the body-mind. This is why always remember knowledge is for the ignorant, for the sleepers. Every single thing we learn, even I went up to my PhD degree and all of that education where, where people in the, in the sleep, in the personhood would say, Wow, that's pretty far to go with education. And it, it's all it's all concepts that were that were driven into into the psychological mind. It was all concepts. Knowledge is for the ignorant. So for the Yani, there is no sense of knowledge because he dismisses knowledge as unreal. It is all, it, it's all geared toward the, the psychological mind and the, and the personhood. It is unreal. Therefore, he does not entertain knowledge. That is why he has no knowledge. Visitor, in reality, no one can have knowledge. Nobody can have anything. Maharaj, in reality, nobody can avoid knowledge. Nobody means who. Visitor, this is the proprietor. Maharaj. Nobody means the one who could refer to whom? Visitor, this is the, the proprietor whom you cannot know. Even the proprietor goes at once. So I could not be the owner of knowledge for two reasons. First, you cannot own any thought. Secondly, the proprietor does not live longer than, the one, than one or two seconds. He also is a thought. Maharaj, this is all right on the worldly level, but true, but truthfully, nothing is. At the highest level, in reality, nothing is. At the worldly level, everything is. See, does that make sense? At the worldly level, the worldly level is your psychological mind. Everything is. So we can spend... Oh, oh, what, what was I, I like 15 years in school, in college, university, 15 years. At the worldly level, everything is, okay? And everything is so important. And um, we're out there chasing name and fame. And get, let's get one degree after another. Um, let's try to be more special than somebody else. Or doesn't have to, for me, why did I continuously go to school? Because I was never satisfied with anything I did. That's why. Because I heard the negative voices in my head all the time telling me I was a nothing and a nobody. So I was never happy with anything I did. That's what kept me going to school. Okay? Um, yeah, in the world, everything matters. And everything is personal to us. And it's all about that name and fame. And how special can I be? How much better can I be than the next person? And in the reality, none of it matters. None of it matters.
At the highest level in reality, nothing is. At the worldly level, everything is. Visitor, does this mean everything is a form of consciousness? Maharaj, whatever is, is an expression of consciousness only. If consciousness is not there, the expression of consciousness is not there either. Therefore, nothing is. And this consciousness is an uncalled for concept. It has appeared spontaneously. Visitor, so once one has heard the truth, there really is only one obstacle to think that one can reach it when one actually can't. Maharaj, after one has got the truth, there is only one obstacle. Visitor, it appears that you have to reach it to attain it. Maharaj, when you have heard the truth, it still needs to be emulated in order to be reached. Visitor, your attempt to understand it, that is the one obstacle. How? Maharaj, because the truth has no form, no name, so how can it be understood? Visitor, but that is something one continues to try for a long period. Maharaj, in the process of trying to understand, you get purified and the process subsides. So what does that mean? What's what I've been saying? The personhood gets peeled away from you. You, you start letting go of the concepts. You start letting go of the attachments. You start letting go of the desire for a name and form. You start seeing what, what the truth really is. And you, most importantly, start seeing the sleep. And the delusion that you've been living in. Oh, that's a trip. <laughs> that is a trip. <laughs> so in the process of trying to understand, you get purified and the process subsides. Then that's when you get to the point where you no longer call yourself a seeker and you no longer see yourself on the path. You now just are. And there's, there's always a continuous deepening process. Because like I said, I, I read what I read tonight. I can't even tell you how many times and all of a sudden like a flashing light, it, light, it was standing out to me. So there's a constant deepening process, okay? But you, you will reach a point where you, where you understand there was never a seeker. The seeker was that person who, who thought they were the body-mind and uh, who thought they had to go somewhere to find themselves. And that's the joke. That is the total joke. <laughs> because the person doing the seeking is the person that we're looking for. It's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. So long as the food body essence is available, this consciousness endures. When the consciousness quits the body, that knowingness is no longer there. There remains only the universal consciousness without the knowingness, the non-knowingness state or anything else. <coughs> Yeah, so, so what is the knowingness? It, it, it is the, 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 the understanding that we exist, that we're here, that... Well, we're, 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 I don't know if he's referring to after a person realizes themselves, but the knowingness in the personhood is the, the second that consciousness knew it was separate from everything. So he says when it quits the body, so I don't know if, I don't know if he's referring, I might just have to read on, I don't know if he's referring to that, um, the personhood is peeled away enough that um, th there is no more attachment to the form, um, that, that we believe with the form, or at the end of life, at the end of the, the life of the form, that when consciousness leaves the form, so let me read on. We'll see if I can get it. When the consciousness quits the body, that knowingness is no longer there. There remains only the universal consciousness without the knowingness. It appears he's talking about um, when, when a person reaches God, God realization. There remains only the universal consciousness without the knowingness, the non-knowingness state or anything else. <coughs> oh no wait that was it 
There remains only the universal consciousness without the knowingness, the non-knowingness state or anything else. I think he's talking about when we leave the form. So we go back in the absolute. So we're not in the self either, he's saying, the non-knowingness state. We're not in the self either. Go back into the absolute. Then in that state, there is no question of manifest or unmanifest. That comes only with the presence of consciousness. So long, so long as the association with the body essence is there, this guna, this state of I amness or beingness is available. But once this food essence is gone, that I amness state is also gone. Yeah, so once we leave the form, that we go back into the pure awareness and, and none of this manifests anything. Universe, world, anything exists anymore. We go back into the pure awareness. This guna, this consciousness, depends entirely on the food body essence. Once the latter is exhausted or no longer available, this consciousness or this guna is also not there. To repeat, the life force, the touch of I amness or this guna is not there in the absence of the food body essence. Whether it concerns an ant or an elephant, all the stories of reincarnation, rebirth, are mere stories meant for the ignorant masses. Meant for the ignorant. I'm going to read it again. All the stories of reincarnation, rebirth, are mere stories meant for the ignorant masses. The sleepers who are still following religion. Okay? Visitor, the past is always projected from this moment. Maharaj, whatever has happened, that is the past. Visitor, but we can never touch the past. We are only now. So we cannot touch anything which is not now. So maybe there is no such thing as the past. Maharaj, what have you to say? Visitor, so if there is no past, there is no bondage. Maharaj, but who says that it cannot be touched, the past? Visitor, I say so. Maharaj, but who is the one who said I? This means that by the word I, that chitana, that manifest dynamic principle, caught itself in that word I. If that dynamic manifest principle does not get caught up in the concept, then it has no birth and no death. Visitor, is it, <laughs> is it possible when you look for what you are that you identify yourself not with consciousness, but that you misapprehend it? Could it be that when you look for yourself, you take this consciousness Maharaj is talking about for that which you are? that you get it mixed up. Second visitor, you mistake consciousness for the ultimate. See, you, you mistake personhood for the ultimate. Maharaj, yes, that consciousness is the prerequisite for anything. Without the consciousness, you cannot even do that search. You cannot look inward. Please proceed with the question. Visitor, that is all. But when you make this mistake, when you identify yourself with consciousness, is it still some kind of feeling or experience? Maharaj, you are consciousness. Where is the question of your merging with the consciousness? Your consciousness means you are. You are-ness. The consciousness are not separate. The you are state itself is the consciousness. Can you follow me? You know you are without the word you are. That itself is the consciousness. Visitor, can this consciousness exist without forms? Maharaj, this consciousness cannot know itself in the absence of a form. A food body essence. Body is a form. For example, you are detecting some bad smell. There must be something from which the bad smell emanates. So something must be present. Likewise, to have this touch of I amness, something must be there. And what is that something? Body, food essence. This body must be there, which is food essence. Storage of food essence is the body. After a long pause, I had a high expectation in you, 
that you would initiate some interesting talks. If nobody talks, I will close the session and send people home. Visitor, I have done some homework for questions. I had to jot them down because when I sit here, all my questions vanish. When I go home, the questions come back. You said one must always remember I am. Maharaj, it is necessary that <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it. I find this all to be so hysterical right now. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, let me stop. <laughs> Maharaj, is it necessary that, that you should remember that you are? Spontaneously, you know and remember that you are. That is why you have come here. Have you not? Because you are. Stay put there. Currently, you are not yet that knowledgeable to be able to realize the happiness that goes with that state. You have yet to evolve. Visitor, I don't get it. Maharaj, you are not mature enough yet. And really, when you finally understand, you will realize that all of this, whatever you have understood, is not the truth. <laughs> this, is the, this is the paradox we all keep hearing that, that, that the truth is actually a paradox of everything we know. It, and I mean, it, nothing could be more true. Nothing could be more true. Anything that we are out here learning. <laughs> you know, and this is why he keeps saying, just be, just be. Because actually, even the personhood is consciousness. So this, this presence that you feel within yourself, that you always know in your whole life as yourself, that is the self. The only thing you have to do is see the delusion, is to break, peel away the personhood. And you will understand that if you just stop and sit and just be quiet, and the, the biggest thing is to know that you are not these thoughts. This is why... Muji's invitation of freedom, it gets you right to the right to the self. And why I keep saying his sad songs are so priceless. And you will see, if you don't see yourself in the people that are speaking to him, then there's something wrong with you. I, I used to sit here by myself. I used to go, I had that same question. I had the same question. Thank you for that. Thank you for asking that question. Something I could have been struggling with for weeks. I'd be watching a satsang and a person standing up there would ask the same thing. We all seem to struggle with the same issues. The same hurdles that give us problems that confuse us. It's amazing. I am going to stop here for right now. And uh, going on 42. I could just read this book all night. I mean... This, it's just amazing. That's all I can say. I know I keep saying that word, but that's really how I feel about it. Um, but you can tell I get a kick out of reading these books now because it really is so simple. I used to see Muji sitting, uh, sitting in the chair and people talking to him. He was almost like speechless. He didn't know what else to say sometimes. He would just say, I don't know how much plainer it can be. You know, what do you look, I don't know how much plainer it can be, you're right there. <laughs> it just gets me hysterical sometimes. But I'm not laughing at people, I'm laughing with people, because I was saying the same exact thing. It was like the story I was telling you. All right, I know I'm supposed to watch my thoughts, but how am I supposed to do that? It's hysterical, once you transcend this, and you see, oh my God, it's been right here the whole time. What is going on here? It's so funny, you guys. Really, you got to have a little fun with this. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's really hysterical. So I want to keep, um, as often as I can, keep giving you new things to listen to and, and to contemplate on to keep, to keep you moving. I don't want you to get stagnant. That's, that's like your enemy. Don't get stagnant. Keep you moving um, and have some fun while you're doing this. And when you, when you make, um, I was going to say, when you make a, a discovery, a find, when you peel away some personhood 
and and you you actually get to see a part of what your delusion was man have a good laugh at it have a good laugh at it you're gonna have lots of laughs that's all I'm gonna tell you and it's it's not a, a personhood kind of sarcastic laugh it's all it's all it's all with love man it's it's like it's like you know we're welcoming welcoming you into into the fold here because you know yeah been there done that man wasn't that wild <laughs> that that's where I'm at right now so oh, no I'm not laughing at anybody um, yeah been there done that uh, if anyone I'm laughing at myself because <laughs> it, it's unbelievable it really is unbelievable that it, every word Maharaj says is of course truth and what is he saying just be still just be still and if we could really understand that none of this would be necessary but unfortunately most of us don't understand it and uh, we have to do go through the process of peeling away that personhood and uh, the whole thing is a beautiful process that's all I want to say and you will grow and you will blossom and yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right you guys have a blessed night